I've recently been quite interested in smart home tech and I picked up a few things. I've got this Amazon Echo Dot, I got a couple of uh, smart plugs by TP-Link, and I got some Hue bulbs, which you can see behind me there and there. All of this stuff is really cool and I've enjoyed using it, but I've been a little disappointed for a few reasons. Firstly, the bulbs are extremely expensive, as you may have noticed. And with just the starter kit that I got, so the, the bulbs and the bridge, I've gone from having convenient switches next to my lamps to turn them on and off, to having to use an app on my phone every time I want light. The Wi-Fi plugs, in particularly uh, this one, which has energy monitoring built in, fun gimmick, but I don't think the official app really takes advantage of this very much. It shows me how much electricity my devices are using, but it doesn't do anything with that data, and there's not much I can do either after seeing that, so I think there's more potential which has not been exploited here. And lastly, the Echo. Uh, this thing out of the box, it doesn't really do much. It can tell me like what the weather is like, but it's a bit boring. Now I think the tech, the hardware here is all really good. It's the software, in my opinion, that's letting it down a bit. Everything comes with its own app and they're not really very good. You can use something like Apple's Home app to control everything in one place, but still, that's only home compatible devices. And I still need my phone to do anything. Now it's great being able to use my phone to control this stuff, but I don't always have it with me. It might be in a different room, on charge for example. I'd like to be able to use my laptop or a control panel on the wall or whatever is around me to do stuff instead. And it would be nice to have everything, even non-smart devices, all controllable from the same interface. So when I get home, Alexa might be able to turn my hue bulbs on, but what about the TV? I still have to find the remote control and do that one myself. So I'm gonna build my own home automation system. Now I'm aware that there are some open source projects that can help me out here, but but by building my own, I'll get more fine-grained control over everything that it does and how it works, and it'll be a really good learning experience, and hopefully quite fun. To start with, it's going to mostly be writing software to replace the existing apps that control all of this stuff, and then later on, I can start looking at bits of hardware and electronics to build out the functionality of the system. This is going to be a series of videos, unless everyone hates them, and you can watch very passively if you're just interested to see what I'm building, or you can follow along. Each one's going to basically be a tutorial and focus on one specific thing. So, for example, it could be how to get started with React, or how to do test-driven development, or how to control a TV with a Raspberry Pi. And you'll be able to watch that single video and learn that thing, that skill. Or you can follow along week to week, and there'll be this wider context of the home automation system that you'll see coming together. Hopefully, that's the plan. Feedback very welcome, we'll see how it turns out. I'll also open source all of the code that I write as part of this, and that will be on GitHub. So, let's talk a little bit about what I'm going to build. I don't yet know the full extent of this system. I don't know everything that it's going to do in the future or how exactly it's going to work. So, I want to start by building something very generic and flexible. And I think that's a good way to build software anyway. I'm going to build it as a set of microservices for three reasons. Firstly, every piece of functionality will be independent and separated from everything else. So if I change my mind about what it should do or how it should work or what language it's written in, it's easy just to rebuild that microservice and everything else can remain the way it is. Secondly, I can distribute the microservices around my home, so I don't want to end up with one big application that needs to run on a server and everything somehow needs to communicate and connect to that. I want more lightweight pieces of functionality which can run on Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and things like that which can be distributed around my home and connected to various bits of hardware. And finally, microservices are all the rage right now. It's a good chance to learn more about them, how they work, best practices and common pitfalls. The first and most central microservice that I'm going to build is the device registry service. This is just going to keep a record of which devices exist on the system. So if you're a new device that comes along and you can be controlled, you would register yourself with the device registry service so then other services can become aware of your existence. Next are the controllers. A controller is a service that interfaces directly with a piece of hardware. You can have many controllers on the same system, so this controller could be on a Raspberry Pi with a temperature sensor connected to the GPIO pins. This controller could be on some other computer and be responsible for communicating with the, the Wi-Fi plugs and the Hue bridge. It's the controller's job to abstract away the complexity of talking to the devices and present a common and simple interface to everything else in the home automation system. The only requirement is to register all of the devices that it can control with the device registry service and then present a REST API to everything else to allow those things to be controlled. So this one would come online and make a request to the device registry service saying, hello, I'm controller number one and my IP address is 192.168. blah blah blah. And I'd like to register this smart plug and this lamp called living room light. 
And finally, for now, we'll have a web interface that gets information from the device registry and then talks to the relevant controllers to allow things to be controlled. This is the MVP, Minimal Viable Product version of the Home Automation System. It's all a bit vague and high level right now and I've left out a lot of the details, but we'll go into those in the coming videos. If we build these initial services, we'll hopefully have quite a, a solid framework for a more complex system. Since each microservice is gonna be separate, we're free to choose a different programming language for each one. Now in a real world situation, choosing a different language for each microservice is not a good idea because it's gonna become hard to manage and confusing. But this is just for fun and for educational purposes, so that's what I'm gonna do. The device registry service uh, just needs to listen to incoming requests and store some details and then regurgitate them back again to other people. It doesn't even need a fully fledged database. It just needs some kind of key value store. And in Python, I know there's a module called Shelf. This lets you persist arbitrary Python objects. I haven't done much in Python, so I'm gonna give this a go. It's a good chance to learn about it. And remember, if something turns out to be a terrible idea, I can just rewrite that microservice and swap it for something else. The controllers, they could all be different depending on what they're controlling and what they're connected to. I could write uh, some C code that would run on an Arduino or something like that, but for now, for the initial one, I'm going to use JavaScript. It's going to be a Node app because there are loads of libraries for Node that can help us out when we're trying to talk to existing devices like this. And finally, the web interface. Everybody is crazy about React right now, so let's give that a go and see what the hype is about. One last thing. Uh, the video you just saw I actually filmed a few months ago before I started working at Monzo, but I didn't want to upload it until I knew I could commit to actually making this series of videos, which I now feel I can. I've got the next few videos planned. Each microservice that I described will be a separate video. Uh, I think it's going to be a great learning experience, certainly for me, hopefully for you as well. I'll cover some relevant bits of computer science as we go, but if you want to take this further, then I recommend Brilliant, the sponsor of this home automation series. My big motivation for this series is to learn a lot of stuff that I otherwise get no exposure to by solving real world problems. To me, this is the best way to learn. Brilliant does a really good job of facilitating this. They've got a lot of interesting courses on maths, science and computer science that introduce you to the topics and guide you through various problems to help you build up an understanding of the concepts and how they relate. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, go to brilliant.org slash jakewright. The first 200 people will get 20% off the premium subscription. I'll see you in part two where we'll build the device registry service in Python. Thanks for watching.